The brain is the packet of meat inside your head, composed of neurons and biological stuff. And the mind is um, all the stuff that goes on, your thoughts, uh, your beliefs, your hopes, your unconscious stuff. So when we open our eyes, we see a lot of things. And we take it for granted that, okay, I know uh, what something is, this is a chair, this is a table, this is grass, this is the campus, but how are these actually recognized? We all sort of believe that we have roughly the same kind of brain. Yet, languages do look wildly different. How does the same kind of hardware run so many different kinds of software? It seems to be that we have this special ability in recognizing faces. We can start to know where in the brain these informations are processed, so it really gives us a lot more information to understand how the brain works and how the brain and the mind can be put together. We need to have theories for how language works that take into account how we think uh, the mind or the brain work, and theories that when we're looking at how the mind or the brain work, we want to be able to account for sort of all the complexities of language. So many neurons um, are plastic. They change their shape and this is how we believe, this is how we encode memories. So we have these very complex, interesting mathematical models. And now the question is, how does that tie up with a biological object like a human brain? How do these, these two things connect? And in order to, to learn more about it, we have to, to look at a human brain as an action. There's some fascinating studies where the very early childhood experiences is actually kind of imprinted into the DNA. This is epigenetics. So I think it's a fascinating interplay between psychology and biology. We're starting to see how these kind of complex psychological phenomenon have this organic substructure, as Freud said. I think studying the mind is actually really one of the last great frontiers of human knowledge, maybe in the way that studying deep space or the bottom of the ocean is, because we just know surprisingly little about what's really going on up there.